What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of The Cutting Board. Today I have a few scrap pieces of African mahogany wood that I think I want to convert into some sort of portable breakfast station, which would include a end grain cutting board section as well as a coffee pour over station. Now this design is not exactly my own. A guy named Ben over at Homemade Modern built one of these a long time ago. However, his was a lot more simple in nature just given the design of his channel. He's often using simple materials that you can get at your local hardwood dealer like Home Depot as well as a select set of tools that are readily available to the average DIYer. However, I've never done an end grain project before and I think I have the perfect amount of materials to actually do that. So uh, I'm really excited to get this started. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. So let's get to it. So to start off, I cut all of my strips along the grain to 1 and 3 8 inches. And if you want any more details about any of my cuts or measurements, make sure you check out the written article that I will link in the description. Now this can also be done on a table saw, I just don't have one currently, and since my pieces were only 9 inches long, doing repeat cuts on my miter saw worked just great. Next up, I laminated my pieces together in increments of six, and looking back, I might have done seven or eight strips just to make my final cutting board wider. Now for this project, I am using Tight Bond 2 glue, which is an FDA approved food safe glue, as well as waterproof. Now you can also use Tight Bond 3 if you have that laying around. And before tightening everything up, I just went in and squared up the sides as much as I could, as well as double checked everything was as flat as it could be. Scrap pieces and a mallet work great for this. Also, I didn't have enough clamps long enough for this glue up, but using two pipe clamps connected actually worked out super great for this part. The next day, I planed all of my pieces down along the grain. Now, I know the manual says don't plane anything under 12 inches, but the real goal is just not to plane anything down shorter than the distance between the two rollers of your planer. Otherwise, the wood can get stuck and cause all sorts of issues. I took light passes on my pieces and everything planed down just fine. I then went back to my miter saw and cut all of my pieces to one and a half inches, giving me 25 total strips. I then laid out all my pieces, rearranging a few to help mix up the grain, and then rotated them 90 degrees so that when I glued them up, everything would be end grain. Now cutting boards are not the place to be stingy about glue, so make sure you use a liberal amount and spread it out well enough to cover all of your surfaces. Now once again, do your best to keep things flat and straight so that when you go to clean up your final piece, it's much easier. And you can actually go back and wipe off some of that excess glue after a few minutes with a damp cloth. That makes cleanup easier as well. So these things finished drying and I'm a little disappointed with how flat they came out. You guys probably can't tell from this angle. And I think things just slipped uh, while I was tightening them up. I'm actually I'm looking now, it's not too bad. Um, but it definitely could be flatter and it be easier for finishing. So I think what I'll do next time probably is just test out the method where you clamp a piece of wood on the top and bottom so that as you tighten things from the side, the pieces can't move up and down. Um, I, I can definitely fix it. Uh, it'll just take a little bit longer than I think I expected, but I guess you live and you learn. Now there is a lot of controversy in the woodworking community about planing end grain. Now being my first project, I didn't want to risk destroying everything, so instead I went ahead and cleaned up everything on my stationary belt sander. And as Johnny from Crafted Workshop puts it, do whatever you feel safe doing, I am not responsible for your woodworking decisions, just be safe in your craft. I can also clean up all of my sides as well as round over the edges lightly. Now a router will work really well for this if you're looking for a specific type of edge, like a chamfered edge for example, but since I wanted just a rounded edge, doing this on the sander worked fine. 
I then could finish out the board with my orbital sander at 120 grit and then final hand sanding at 220, 320, and 400 grit, including a wet sanding at 220, which I did in order to raise the grain. That way, when this cutting board got wet down the road, the grain wouldn't raise and become rough again. Then it was time for oil, and I'm using a food safe mineral oil for this project. And this is clearly the best part about making a cutting board. Last up, I could construct and assemble my pour over station. And I used black pipe for one set and galvanized pipe for another. And my design only actually requires these five pieces, which I think cost me about 14 bucks at Home Depot. I then could lay out, mark up, and attach the pipe to one end of the cutting board. I pre-drilled everything, screwed it in, and then gave everything one last hand tightening before screwing in the pipe. And then I was done. Well, this thing came out great. I'm really, really excited with how awesome this came out, especially as a first end grain project. So I still need to get a funnel to put in this because you put the funnel in, then you'll put the coffee filter in, and then you'll put the coffee grounds, and then in goes the water, and out comes the coffee underneath here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the one that I picked. It's the, the same one that Ben from Homemade Modern had for his. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon, it's perfect. Um, but other than that, as a first end grain project, I'm pretty happy with this. I think my miter saw blade is crooked, maybe by like one or two degrees. There's like just an ever so slight slant, ever so slight slant in my cuts now that I'm noticing it up close now that it's finished. I'm gonna have to look into that. I feel like I need to end this video with me doing like some sort of like epic Alex Steele cutting montage after like I created something awesome. I'm gonna go check and see if I have any fruit to cut. Okay, bad news. I don't have any fruit to cut, so uh, instead of ending the video with me going on a crazy cutting spree, I'm just going to say thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time on the cutting board.